Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Drotus, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. For the last few weeks, I've been talking about the different types of judgments. There are two judgments, one the believer will experience and one the unbeliever will experience. I've also been teaching about what happens after the rapture. The rapture is not the end of our of our walk with the Lord. In fact, it is only the very beginning. Some critics say that there is no rapture. I have to ask them, how do you deal with 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18? How do you do deal with 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51? Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. How do you deal with the types and the shadows of the rapture all through the Bible? Even in the Old Testament, there are types and shadows of a rapture event. Others say that the rapture comes at the end of the tribulation period. That never made much sense to me. They say that this is the, that at the end of the tribulation period, after we've gone through all seven years, we will still be here, we will still be alive, and we will be caught up to be with the Lord. And then immediately after we're taken up to be with the Lord, we then mount up horses and come back to the earth to fight in the battle of, of Armageddon, the final battle between Satan, Antichrist, and Jesus. And we read about this in Revelation chapter 19. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. That's us. I, I believe that we will return with Jesus Christ at the end of the tribulation period. I believe that we will be in that, as, as Jude saw, myriads and myriads of, of, of saints of God coming back with the Lord Jesus Christ to establish the millennial kingdom. I believe that. I just think that the timing is off. If the, the rapture doesn't occur at the end of the tribulation period, the timing is off in that, in that doctrine. I, I agree with the part of coming back with the Lord. I just disagree with the timing. Let's look at uh, the great rapture verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in, fifth, in verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus... We shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. There is an event. It's called the rapture. Now, some have said you're, you're teaching a wrong doctrine. The, the word rapture isn't even in the Bible. I understand that. But the word harpazo is. And the word harpazo is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. It says, then we shall all be caught up. This is the Greek word. The Bible was, the New Testament was, was written in Greek, and then we translated it into English. So, of course, we don't have the word rapture, because rapture is actually a Latin word. But harpazo is the word caught up, and it's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, and it says this. The definition is to seize, to snatch away, to catch up, to take by force. The word describes the Holy Spirit's acting in transferring Philip from one location to another and Paul's being carried up to paradise. 2 Corinthians 12, 2. It suggests the exercise of sudden force. There is an event that's going to happen one day in the very near future where Jesus Christ will leave heaven. 
He will come to this earth. He will descend into the clouds. The voice of an archangel and the trump of God will sound. And the dead in Christ, those who have died, those who have um, known the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, and they have died before the rapture, their bodies are still here. Those dead in Christ will be re uh, resurrected. The, at the last trumpet sound, the, the, the bodies will be resurrected and the, body, the dead bodies will be put back together again. They'll be reconfigured and then they'll be raptured and they'll meet their spirits with the Lord in the clouds above the earth. You see, to, depart, to die, when you're, a, when you're a believer, to die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. If you have loved ones who have passed away, they're not just laying in the ground or they're not just in some suspended animation. They are with the Lord right now. But the Lord um, uh, needs every one of us to have a resurrected body just like Jesus has a, a, a resurrected body. And then the dead in Christ will rise first and they will be reunited with their spirits in the earth. Then we who are alive... I always like to think of myself as being someone here who is alive when the rapture occurs. Then we who are alive will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll be changed. In other words, this corruptible body, which could not exist in the place called heaven, or even before God himself, it could not exist. This, res this corruptible body will become incorruptible. And then we will be raptured. And at that point in time, after the rapture, you have all the believers from the past who have died in faith, but, but weren't here when the rapture occurred. And you have those who were on the earth when the rapture occurred. You have all of those people up in the clouds with the Lord. And some people say, and I guess that's the end. Oh, no. That's not the end. That's the beginning. I've been teaching about the two judgments that every person will experience. You see, every man, woman, boy, girl will be judged. There is the judgment seat of Christ and there is the great white throne judgment. You won't go to both judgments. Wherever judgment you go is decided upon the spiritual condition of, your, of yourself when you die, when you go to be to these judgments. The believers go to the judgment seat of Christ. It's not a judgment for your salvation. The very fact, if you're a believer and you're before the judgment seat of Christ, means that you've been born again. Paul calls it the Bema seat. And where Paul got that idea was when, when, when he was alive, they were doing games similar to the Olympics, or maybe it was the precursor to the Olympics. And Paul saw these games, and he saw this great field where this judge would sit in a very high seat, and he would observe all the events being played out, all the different competitions being played out. And when someone won the competition, they would go before the Bema seat, and they would receive a crown, a perishable crown, but nonetheless a crown. Paul is explaining that, that that's what the judgment seat of Christ will be like. When, when a believer dies or when a believer is raptured, at that point in the future, the day of judgment, we will all stand one at a time before the Bema seat of Christ and we will be rewarded. It's not something to be nervous about. Well, maybe a little nervous because it's so exciting, but the very fact that you're there means that you're going to get rewards. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all... I went to Bible school and I learned something. The word all means all. All is all. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according what, to what he has done, whether good or bad. Let's look at another, another verse. Romans chapter 14, verse 10. But why do you judge your brother, or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And I'll skip verse 11. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. 
Paul is teaching. He's taught it to the Corinthians and he taught it in the book of Romans. He said that all believers will stand before the judgment seat of Christ, not to be judged on your salvation, but to be judged on what you did on this earth after you were born again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we read a little bit more as Paul expounds on this. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it. Paul's talking about there is a day where everyone's work will be judged on what you built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the solid rock. Jesus Christ is what my foundation is built on. But after that foundation was laid and after I was born again, I began to do things. Some were good. Some were gold, silver, precious stones. Others were wood, hay, and straw. But on the day of judgment, on the day that we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, it will be declared because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which it has been built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet as so through fire. You see, there are some things that we do that we build on the foundation that are wood, hay, and straw. They will be burned up. There are other things that we've done that are gold, precious stones, silver. They will go through the fire, and we will be rewarded for that. In other, in other lessons, I taught about things that we can do, things that will be judged. The judgment will be on what we are doing. On that day, what we build on the foundation of Jesus Christ. The judgment will reveal things. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. God will judge our thoughts. God will judge our intentions. God will judge everything. God will judge our words. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. Here we go. Matthew 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels and them then he will reward each according to his works. Rewards are coming for us. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. Jesus is talking about crown. We, we, we will receive a crown. Or maybe crowns. Oh no, the rapture is not the end of it all. It's the beginning of incredible events and is culminated by us mounting up on horses with Christ and coming back to this earth to, to help judge this earth. But much happens before that. Much happens before that. That's why the rapture has to happen sooner than at the end of the, uh, of the tribulation period. During the rapture, we will, we will then be reunited with our lost loved ones. Oh, what a happy day that will be. Maybe you have a lost one, loved one. You will be reunited with them. We will be given a, a white linen garment to wear. Revelation 3, 5 tells us that. We will be given a white stone. Revelation 2, 17. We will be given power over the nations. Revelation 2.26. These are things that happen after the rapture. These are things that we have to look forward to. And we will receive crowns. We talked about this in other lessons, but I want to go back over it again. We will receive crowns. 
2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who love his appearing. Do you love his appearing? I bet you do. That's why you watch these videos. You love and you're awaiting for his appearing. There's a crown laid up for you. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blesses the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Are you battling temptation? Are you enduring trials and tribulations and temptations? There's a crown of life laid up for you. First Peter. First Peter chapter 5, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. There's a crown of glory awaiting for you from the chief shepherd. Revelation 2, chapter 10. Revelation 2, verse 10. Do not fear any of those things which are about to suffer. About to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. There's a martyr's crown. If you die in faith for Jesus Christ, there's a martyr's crown. But we will, after the rapture, when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema seat of Christ, we will be rewarded for what we've done on this earth, and, and we will be given crowns, and we will be given a linen garment, we will be given all these wonderful things. Then, we go back to the verse where we started off. Then, Revelation 19, verse 11, then we We'll get on the horse. We will get on horses. We will mount up on these horses and we will follow the Lord of Lords. Verse 12 of Revelation 19. His eyes were like a flame of fire and his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God and the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen. That's us. That's us after we went through the Bema seat, the judgment seat, the rewards. Then we will clothe in fine linen, white and clean, follow him on the white horse. There is so much to be looking forward to, to be excited about. Yes, things are tough right now. Yes, there's persecution, trials and tribulations. But, but we are drawing closer and closer day by day. Events are unfolding. Prophetic events are unfolding. That's pointing the way that soon and very soon we are going to see the king. So I encourage you, continue to build on that foundation of, of Jesus Christ as the rock. Build upon that foundation and, and rewards are coming. As they say, payday is coming. God might not settle up every Friday afternoon. God might not settle up every week. He might not settle up every month. Might not settle up every year. But one day there will be a time when God will settle things up and it will be a time of great rewards and, and great excited, excitement. So be be happy. Be anticipatory. Look forward to what we are seeing. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. That way you can get in on every new video that I put out, usually put out two a week, and it's talking about the end time events or the rapture. So until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you.